So brothers, I'm, I'm Brian Hartzell. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm the director of chapter services, uh, West. I'm a Western Kentucky brother uh, from 2014, worked on staff uh, for several years. I think this is year seven now. And uh, I'm excited to be with you all today and talk through uh, the awards application and how to apply. And hopefully this will be informative and um, you'll be able to um, up your awards game and your hardware uh, for this uh, upcoming year. So th for this presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about why to apply at the beginning, go through an overview of the entire awards process, and then we're going to walk through award by award uh, that goes into the Cheney Cup process. Uh, so I'm going to go pretty quickly through each award and then give some uh, kind of best practices, some tips on uh, each one, and then hopefully have some time at the end for questions. And then I believe Joe Roth and Helen Larman, uh, fellow staff members, are in the chat, uh, hopefully to answer your questions. If they're unable to answer a question, they'll, they'll let me know at the end of the presentation and I'll, I'll get to it, but they should know. Uh, most of the stuff and should be able to help. All right, so why apply? Uh, it seems like a lot of effort. A lot of chapters will look at the awards application and see uh, it looks pretty daunting, uh, but uh, it's definitely worth it. Uh, being the best chapter on your campus is great. We want you to take care of your yard, uh, but it's small potatoes compared to uh, measuring yourself up with Phi Gamma Delta's best. Uh, we see, you know, the same few chapters winning a year in and year out and it's because some other chapters that could potentially be winning awards uh, get intimidated at the size of the awards packet or say you know this isn't something that we've ever done uh, so I would encourage you just throw your name in the hat uh, give it your all in the application and you may be surprised with um, how you stack up with Phi Gamma Delta's best and we're also working with some chapters and, you know, they tell me, hey, Brian, we don't apply for the awards. It's, it's not for the applause of men. And that's great. Like, I, I, I don't want you to do things for the applause of men. But the chapters that are telling me this generally are the mediocre ones that just want an excuse to, to keep sucking and to, to not try to improve. So um, a, a quote that, that has stuck with me from my undergraduate days is, you know, we don't do things to win the awards. That's not why we're doing it, but we may win the awards uh, for what we do. And then this is the idea of excellence. You know, one of our five values that continuous improvement. Uh, we don't know uh, how great we are until we uh, can uh, compare ourselves with a standard and uh, continuously improving is, uh, and looking at the awards packet is an easy way to know, are we improving or are we um, stagnant or are we getting worse? And it's an easy SWOT analysis for the chapter. If you're going through the awards packet and you are answering no to a lot of questions or are leaving some blank because your chapter doesn't do this, that's, that's an easy SMART goal that you can set, an easy way for you to turn around and say, hey, this, we would have to leave this blank in an awards application, so maybe we should focus on this uh, throughout uh, this next semester. An overview of the awards. Uh, you can't win if you don't apply. Uh, I've, I've sat with several chapters over the years at awards banquets, and you know they'll hear, oh, the Jordan Bowl is coming up. Oh, you know we have good scholarship, but we might win this one. And uh, I asked them, well, did you apply? I'm like, oh no, we didn't realize we had to apply. So you, you can't win if you don't apply. And the way to do that is go through the website, uh, www.figam.org. And uh, if you click undergraduates and then awards, there is a part that says chapter awards application, which will take you to the Smarter Select system. It is not live right now. Got to make the updates for the 2020 calendar year, um, but it'll be live in the next month or so. Uh, and you'll be able to apply then. So it works on a calendar year basis. Uh, so everything that you would have done for this upcoming awards deadline, so March 31st is the deadline. Uh, everything is already done. Uh, it's January to December of 2020. Um, it ended December 31st, so your, your chapter calendar year is closed. So you have everything right now that you need to be able to complete 
an awards application due on March 31st. So you can go ahead and start um, compiling that and getting ready uh, to submit the application at the end of March. Uh, with the calendar year system uh, being said, the 2021 awards calendar year has started. So that started nine days ago. We are fresh into a new year. So everything you do from now on through December will count uh, for the application that you will turn in in 2022. And then to win the Cheney Cup, uh, you must apply for all chapter awards, except the Condon. Uh, the Condon is for most improved chapter. Uh, you don't have to uh, apply for that. But if you do want to win the Cheney Cup, you must apply for all the other chapter awards. And I'll get into um, all of those here in just a little bit. There is a lot of documentation, so make sure you have someone that is organized in charge of your awards packet, someone that can manage a lot of different data and a lot of moving parts. Um, so yeah, just make sure you have someone organized in there. And then it is judged by graduate volunteers. Headquarters has no part in judging uh, the applications. I manage the process, and to be honest, I don't even read uh, most of the applications. I just send them straight on to the judges. That way it's not biased. Um, we're, we're not influencing the decisions made by graduate volunteers. You know, they're not going to your field secretary and saying, you know, what was your interaction like with so-and-so chapter? And uh, so they're not being influenced by that. They are strictly reading your awards application and that's uh, what's uh, being judged. So with that overview being said, I will jump into the sections of the Cheney Cup uh, and uh, each section is its own um, part of the uh, Cheney Cup application, uh, but there are some sections that are also their own award, um, starting in section three. So section one and two are just kind of the generic uh, chapter info. Uh, for section one, what you want to uh, gather uh, is the chapter size at its largest and its smallest throughout the year, uh, and then compare that with the average chapter size so you can get that from the community report um, that your fraternity and sorority life office uh, should publish. Um, and uh, then there's some yes or no questions. Just do you have a PL, BCA, house core? Do you have a parents mom's club? Do you have a, a graduate brother mentor program? And then do you host a strategic retreat? So fairly simple to get started. Um, hopefully it's not too difficult uh, to find this information. The next section uh, for section one is the ritual section. How many chapter meetings are you having a year and what percentage of those are ritual meetings? Do you omit anything from the ritual? Are there parts of the initiation that you skip? Uh, hopefully not. Um, is your equipment all good? Do you have enough? Uh, is it in good condition? What ceremonies did you perform throughout the past year? Did you do the consecration? Did you do the formal pledging and initiation? Did you do the officer installation and PL installation? Uh, Hopefully you didn't have to do any memorials, but if you did, there is a place uh, for that as well. And then post-initiation education, how many hours did you do? Did you have uh, the newly initiated men memorize the appropriate uh, information? And uh, did you require uh, these newly initiated men to pass uh, the appropriate examinations, the written and the verbal portions? And then the last part of section one, <clears throat> that contains retreats and recognition. Uh, did you host a chapter retreat? What percentage of brothers attended and participated? How long did you talk about values? How long did you talk about the SMART goals and the vision, the direction of the chapter? Did your cabinet host a retreat? That's a free response, uh, talking about how long it was and what topics were covered. Uh, so you can um, just write however, you know, a paragraph or so to explain that. And then this will be a constant theme, which graduate brothers are involved with these. Uh, just go ahead right now and, and for every award, just write out uh, how do we get graduate brothers involved with this? Because it's you, you'll see it uh, several times throughout the presentation. And then how does the chapter recognize and create development opportunities uh, and then provide some documentation for that. Some tips on section one, uh, the more ritual, the better uh, we see, you know, Good chapters will do uh, one ritual meeting per month, uh, but some of the best and the ones that are continually contending uh, for the Cheney Cup are uh, doing more uh, every other week. Um, host at least one chapter retreat, uh, the best and pretty much what's expected of a, a top uh, you know, Cheney Cup 
placing group is, is going to be one cabinet and one chapter retreat per semester. Uh, for the chapter retreat, shoot for at least 80%. Uh, there was a chapter uh, in the 2019 calendar year that got knocked uh, for low attendance at a retreat. And you know, with the Chinny Cup being overall all around efficiency, uh, the judges questioned, you know, if if uh, you know, if the chapter can't get brothers to attend, you know, the goal setting, the direction, strategic planning portion of uh, the chapter retreat, then you know, is is this chapter really efficient? So uh, make sure that you're uh, having strong attendance at these retreats, and then involve graduate brothers. You know, have your PL uh, host or be a part of the retreats, um, and then. Uh, especially the cabinet one, uh, being that the officers are working with the PL uh, most closely, and then develop a good relationship with the fraternity and sorority life office. Uh, you, hopefully you should be doing this anyways because they're a great resource, uh, but specifically with the awards packet, this will help with gathering documentation. You can just ask them for community reports and um, all of the other uh, documentation that comes with the awards packet. For section two, this is uh, recruitment and new member education. Uh, for the recruitment piece, how many men are on your names list for the last year? How many of them did you interact three or more times? How many bids did you offer? How many accepted? And then what is your retention rate of those that accepted bids? How many of them initiated? And then a couple of yes or no questions. Did you follow the secret ballot, uh, the unanimous 100% bid voting uh, bylaw? Did you follow that correctly? And then did you have alcohol for your recruitment? And then how are you training your chapter? on recruitment, is it annually, is it semesterly, do you not do it? Uh, and then again, how do you engage graduate brothers? A lot of chapters will have like a not for college days alone dinner or a networking event during recruitment to show the potential new members that, hey, this is not for college days alone where you know, we, we say this and we mean it. And then how are you involving legacies in recruitment and uh, specifically seeking them out and giving them uh, a fair shake through the recruitment process? For new member education, there are two parts. First is called adding to the college experience. This is a, a, a lot of uh, outside of the chapter um, pieces. Uh, so like, how are we bringing in guest speakers outside of undergraduates? You know, is it graduate brothers, faculty members, people in the community, entrepreneurs coming to talk to the new members? And what are those programs that we are uh, hosting that are beyond just the history, the per pilgrim uh, for Phi Gamma Delta. Uh, how are we recognizing academic success in the classroom? Uh, how are we recognizing them for living um, the fraternity values? How are we engaging new members in the chapter? Uh, how are uh, we encouraging them to seek out leadership positions uh, in, in the chapter and then uh, also on campus? How are we involving them in operations? Are they joining committees immediately? And then how are we developing their leadership skills? And then there's a portion about the Big Brother program, some yes or no questions, as well as the requirements and expectations for the Big Brother. Part two is the written program. Uh, point blank, you should have one. <laughs> it should be written uh, or you know typed out, uh, but you should have a plan uh, for new member education and you, you will have to attach it here um, for the uh, for this part of the award, and then a couple free response. You know, how long is the new member ed program, and then how long after the end of the education period were new members initiated? Hopefully, uh, immediately or uh, very close to the end of the education period. And then the last part of section two is just called a, a best practices section. And did you have someone attend the Leadership Institute? Are your finances straight and ordered and organized? Did you file all of the required documentation? Did you file the Form 990, the annual financial report, the budget and the audit in this past year? And then what amount was owed by undergraduates at the end of the fiscal year and end of the calendar year? And what was owed by graduates? Uh, again, a chapter was uh, knocked for this with the Cheney Cup being an efficiency, all around efficiency award, uh, it really speaks to the chapter or to the judges if a chapter uh, is not collecting dues. Uh, if, if they have a high balance, uh, high accounts receivable, then 
the chapter is, is not being efficient in its business operations. So a chapter can get knocked uh, for um, poor finances. And then there's a piece about chairman documenting their activities and programs and their expenses. The chapter history and the minutes, uh, how are you organizing your system and, and your files? Uh, a lot of chapters will have like a Google Drive or uh, some, some sort of shared system. So this is your opportunity to share how you document uh, everything and um, keep everything organized. And then what uh, Phi Gamma Delta resources and programs have you utilized throughout the last year? So I mentioned the Leadership Institute. You know, did you have someone attend the summit, um, academies, ecclesia? Um, did you have brothers participate in Behind Happy Faces or a leadership um, recruitment program facilitated by a field secretary or a headquarters staff member? So this is your chance to list all of the resources that you took advantage of over the past year. Some tips on section two, uh, file all financial reports and have little to, to no accounts receivable. Uh, I mean, you should be doing this to uh, just increase the financial viability of the organization and to uh, keep your uh, tax status, uh, tax exempt status. Uh, but in order to uh, place in, in the Cheney Cup, uh, it looks good to have as a little accounts receivable as possible. The higher the bid acceptance, the better. You know, if you're handing out 100 bids and only 20 men are signing, uh, that doesn't really look good to the committee. And then as well as the retention rate, uh, so making sure that of the men that you're extending bids to, a lot of them are accepting, and then you're carrying those through to the initiation. Again, involve graduate brothers in new member education and recruitment. Uh, have them as guest speakers. Uh, involve them in um, networking events and ways to um, get involved uh, from early on in uh, these new members' uh, careers with Phi Gamma Delta. Have high engagement uh, through the new member education process into the Big Brother program. So how are you engaging you know, new members immediately? Uh, some chapters like to do, you know, we have a separate like new member cabinet. Um, that is That can be knocked by the committee. Uh, the, the Cheney Cup judges want to see that we're involving the new members immediately in the chapter committees, that we're uh, giving them uh, some opportunities to uh, make an impact on the chapter, uh, to learn the operations, to grow into leaders, to become big brothers, and then eventually, uh, hopefully, officers, chairmen, all that good stuff. Uh, section one and two are uh, generally either tiebreakers um, or easy knockouts. So what I mean by that is if, uh, you know, if, uh, if there are two chapters that are uh, competing for the Cheney Cup, and you know they're pretty even in the Baker, Jordan, uh, the Zerman, and some of these other big awards. Uh, the judges will look at section one and two and see which chapter is the most overall efficient. And so that's where the the retreat comes in, the the finances, um, the recruitment, and the member education numbers that can set a chapter apart. Um, it's also an easy knockout. So if, if you are not doing the ritual at all, or if you have a high accounts receivable balance, uh, that can easily uh, just knock you out of contending for uh, the Cheney Cup. So make sure that the, this section, these two sections are, are tight and that you're, you're operating on all cylinders. So then we'll get into uh, the last uh, four sections on their own are their own awards that also fit into the greater Cheney Cup application. So you can win the Baker Cup on its own. Um, you can apply only for the Baker Cup if you want. Uh, but if you want to apply for the Cheney, um, you have to apply for the Baker, the Zerm, and the Jordan, um, the Brightman, and the Kuhn. So this is just one section of the Cheney Cup, but it is also its own award. So when you think about the Baker Cup, uh, think philanthropy and service and membership development. So what you have to do here in the application is list all brothers community service hours and all the uh, philanthropic money that you've raised as a chapter. Make sure that you are doing this as it goes along. When As soon as you have a, a, a service event, make sure you're documenting it uh, because you know with the application being due in March, uh, you, know, you don't want to have to be looking back at March 2020 and well, no one wants to look back at March 2020, but uh, you don't want to be looking back a year 
ago and saying, what was this community service event that we did? How many hours did we have? Who attended? Uh, it's just so much easier to uh, uh, document it as you go along. And that would save you a lot of time uh, as you are uh, doing your awards application. And then there's some free response membership development questions. What kinds of speakers are you bringing in? Um, specifically, how are you de-emphasizing alcohol and drug use, uh, healthy relationships? How are you um, promoting etiquette and uh, risk management? What are the events that you're hosting with faculty? How are you involved with the campus? Uh, what values discussions do you host and how do you recognize brothers living in accordance with the values? And then, you know, Flag and Delta's vision right here is developing courageous leaders. How is your chapter uh, living out the vision of the organization? Some tips on the Baker Cup, uh, stop relying on only Greeks, um, namely sororities uh, for philanthropic donations. I, you know, it's great if you've got a, you know, some sort of philanthropy competition, but if you really want to compete uh, for the Baker Cup and if you really want to raise, you know, buku bucks for philanthropy, uh, you're going to have to broaden your horizons. Uh, reach out to graduate brothers, parents, um, the community, um, that's how you're going to uh, make the most impact. Uh, the chapters that routinely win this award are, you know, they're, they're doing community-wide events. They're involving multiple organizations. Uh, some of them are even uh, involving people across the country and other chapters, you know, doing competitions with other chapters or uh, reaching out to them to uh, be a part of their philanthropy. So broaden your horizons, think big uh, if you want to be able to compete um, in this award. Now, obviously, the more dollars and service hours per brother, the better. Uh, you know, some chapters on campuses that uh, you know, may only have two, three thousand 3,000 people and think, well, we'll, we'll never compete because uh, you know, we, we only raise you know, $2,000 uh, for this past year. And you may kick the other chapter's tails on your own campus, but you know, how do we compete with a chapter that's 150 men raising $20,000? So, the committee looks at the, the dollars and service hours per brother um, so that it's a little bit more fair. Um, you know, these larger chapters that are bringing in tons of money for dance marathons and whatnot um, can still uh, compete with some of these other chapters that you know, are, are maybe rocking and rolling on their campus but don't necessarily have to eye popping uh, numbers. So, a, a good recommendation is have a, some sort of a signature philanthropy. Think of this as like a lead actor of a film, kind of a headline grabber. Uh, this this looks good to, to the committee. Like this is like the chapter's kind of a, like main attraction uh, for their philanthropy program. But then also you need a strong supporting cast, uh, that social service program, consistent service opportunities, consistent philanthropy um, offerings uh, for uh, chapter members to be involved with. And then bring in several membership development speakers, uh, more, more the merrier, um, or uh, bonus points for hosting and supporting several educational experiences for uh, your men and for uh, the community. So involving other organizations and inviting them to be a part of these, uh, these talks and these the educational experiences, uh, that looks great in the committee's eyes. Section four, uh, the Jordan Bowl and Owen Cup. This is uh, just academics and scholarship. Uh, Jordan Bowl is the highest comparative scholarship and the Owen Cup is most improved. So for this, you'll need the institution and uh, community grade report. If your campus doesn't uh, produce this, then uh, you'll have to work with me and we'll figure out um, some way to where you can still uh, compete for this award, even though we may not know how you stack up in your community. Uh, you also need your minimum GPA set out in your bylaws for extending a bid, uh, receiving a bid, uh, being initiated, what the minimum GPA for officers and big brothers are, and then what does it mean to be in good standing. You'll need your scholarship program, and the good components of this are all in the scholarship manual, and that has pretty much everything that you need, uh, but specifically how does scholarship show up in recruitment, how are you in involving uh, your new member educators uh, with the scholarship program. What does good standing look like and what are the consequences for not being in good standing? And then how are you recognizing brothers for academic excellence? So that's kind of the internal piece. There's an external piece as well. What is the chapter support for outside the classrooms? How are we 
making brothers aware of scholarships, study abroad opportunities, internships, and then how are we educating on deadlines and how to you know, set yourself apart in some of those uh, nomination or application processes. And then the last piece of the Jordan is uh, how are we creating a good environment? So you know, if you have a chapter house, this is how are we enforcing quiet hours or how are we um, making sure that there's study tables available and um, how are we uh, having a mentor program with brothers of similar majors? Um, if you don't have a house, you know, how are you encouraging brothers to go to the tutoring center or the writing center or you know, that, that brother mentoring program uh, is, is great for you know, housed or unhoused chapters? Uh, and then the last piece is a continuous improvement. Uh, how are you, you know, noticing what was lacking last year and how have you improved your scholarship plan? Um, over time. Some tips here. Make sure you have high standards for GPAs for bid initiation and officers. Uh, you know, definitely higher than the minimum uh, required for the fraternity. That looks really good. Uh, high comparative GPA is important. So generally the campuses or the chapters that are winning this are in the top three. Uh, it, but if you're on, you know, if you're on a campus where, you know, you're 10th, but you have a 3-5, uh, and you know, our educational director will take that into consideration. But what is more important is the program and the culture. So, you know, if, if you're eighth on campus, but your program is really good and, you know, you bring in members that um, you know, need support and you're providing that support and they're improving, then uh, that looks really good to the educational director. Uh, if you're just recruiting, you know, men that are going to get 4.0s anyway, um, I mean, that's great for you. Uh, but if you have no program to back it up, then uh, you, you will probably not place in the Jordan Bowl. Uh, what our educational director is looking for is you know, if we bring in men, what is, how is the chapter making a difference in this man's life uh, in, in terms of academic excellence? Uh, how are we providing the support and making sure that the chapter is creating the environment for him to succeed and go on to you know, be um, be a competitive uh, applicant for internships and jobs and all of that. Um, use a, a scholarship program. The scholarship manual has everything you need. It's on our website. Uh, it breaks it down uh, very simply and what you need in your program and then make sure you follow it. Um, find and utilize a good faculty scholarship advisor. This is huge. A lot of chapters miss this. Uh, they either don't have one or they have one that's just in name only that needs to sign off on, you know, random things like room rentals or um, risk management agreements or whatever. Uh, utilize a good faculty advisor. Uh, this takes chapters to the next level. They'll connect you with so many opportunities on campus and uh, this is a, an irreplaceable part of the chapter experience. And then the improvement section can be a di difference maker. Uh, this is pretty much the Owen Cup is you know, how have you improved over the last year. So make sure you have the community grade reports and information from two years ago, as well as this past year, if you're going to apply for the Owen Cup. Uh, but if you know all things being equal uh, for the rest of the Jordan, uh, our educational director is looking at chapters that are improving continuously on their scholarship program and um, providing you know varying offerings for um, brothers to uh, continue improving. Section five is the Zerman Trophy. Uh, put simply, this is the uh, Campus Involvement Award. So we'll need here is the individual list of brothers and their extracurricular involvement, as well as the leadership positions that they hold in those organizations. Uh, you know, bonus points for being leadership uh, or ha holding leadership positions in other organizations. And uh, the committee looks a little bit more strongly on, you know, some key uh, organizations on campus. So, you know, I think student government or ambassador programs, uh, those all look uh, really good in the committee's eyes. And then some free response, you know, how do you encourage participation? What IFC positions uh, did you all hold? And how are you engaging with uh, your local Greek community, but then also engaging with organizations 
outside of IFC and Pan Linux, has specifically uh, multicultural organizations is mentioned by name in the awards application. And then how are you building a relationship with the school and the community, uh, with you know the uh, faculty and you know even the president's office? How are you uh, building a relationship with them and then local? Um, you know, city council members and you know, local government, all of that good stuff can can look good in the committee's eyes. And then a, a smaller piece, intramurals, uh, won't make or break your application, but I feel the need to mention it as a former intramurals chair. So if you win the intramurals cup, that's great. <laughs> uh, some tips on the, the Zerman, uh, shoot for 90% or more brothers involved on campus. A leadership in many organizations is a plus, uh, which I just mentioned. Uh, make sure to highlight, you know, if you have presidents of other organizations or treasurers and, and whatnot. Be intentional about mixing with MPHC, MGC, and other multicultural organizations. Um, get out, get out of your bubble. Uh, it's just good to do in general, um, but will help you uh, with your uh, Zerman uh, application. You know, think of creative ways to to mix with them. You know, it, it can be social, uh, but you know, there's bonus points for. You know, hosting a joint leadership retreat with, you know, the leadership of, you know, Alpha Phi Alpha or another organization. Uh, you can host educational opportunities with them. You can co-sponsor uh, something for the campus. Um, that all is uh, really good for your Zerman application. And then support your campus and community mission. Uh, every institution, campus, uh, university, college has a mission statement. They have values. They have their strategic plan, you know, where they're going in the next several years. So do some research, uh, go to your campus website, figure out where your campus wants to go. And then how does Phi Gamma Delta fit into that mission? You know, partner with the office of the president, the chancellor, so the people high up in the campus that are making things happen and say, how, do, how, how can Phi Gamma Delta make a difference? What do you need from us? Uh, to move uh, this campus forward and that that will look really good um, well good good PR and good uh, relationship building piece but will also uh, serve you well with your Zerman application and then section six uh, this is the last section of the the Cheney Cup application is the Brightman Trophy and the Kuhn plaque so this is all graduate relations Brightman Trophy is your overall graduate relations program and then the Kuhn plaque is the best chapter publication generally you think, you know, newsletter. Now for the Brightman, as a, a big portion of this is your key graduates and how you engage with them. So there's a big section uh, with the what how you're interacting with and communicating with your Purple Legion there, uh, how involved is he with your key graduates with the campus, uh, how well does he educate brothers on fraternity law? Is he involved with transitions and retreats and all that good stuff. Then there's a section about the BCA and House Corporation. If you, you know, how often are you meeting with them, communicating with them? If you don't have a house core and don't have a house, you are not knocked for that. Um, this, it is only judged if, uh, you know, if you have a functioning, uh, you know, BCA functioning house core, it's only judged if you um, have one of those. So, you know, don't feel like you're being knocked if you don't have a house core. And then uh, what does your parents club look like? What activities are you having? What kind of communication um, is happening with your parents club? And then the Kuhn plaque, uh, put simply, is just your best chapter publication. Uh, no free response or anything. You just upload you know, a newsletter and it's judged on content and presentation. So if you just submit like a Word doc with a bunch of information, probably not going to do so hot. Um, so make sure it looks professional and uh, that has some good content as well. Some tips on the Brightman and Kuhn. Do due diligence involving your PL, BCA, House Court, if applicable, and your section chief. Make sure they're involved in all areas of chapter operations, recruitment uh, through new member education, through officer retreats, uh, educational opportunities, all that. Uh, start a parents club if you don't have one already. Uh, this is more than just like a mom's day and dad's day, which a lot of chapters do, and you know, parents weekends and all that, which is great. Uh, but uh, making this a chair position, have somebody 
uh, responsible for this throughout the year can really take the chapter to the next level and involve uh, parents in your day-to-day uh, -day operations. Uh, start a graduate mentor program. The easiest way to start this is with sponsoring a new member. A, a lot of chapters will do this to where, you know, if we're starting with a new member class, then, you know, we're not having to find, you know, 80 graduate brothers immediately for everyone. But if we can build up uh, through the years, you know, after about four years of new member classes, uh, everyone in the chapter should have um, a graduate mentor. And you can, uh, you know, pair them up by, you know, majors or uh, like if someone wants to go into the accounting field and we have a graduate brother that's an accountant and that's an easy way uh, to do it. If you are a younger chapter, then um, it can be, you know, obviously difficult if you don't have a lot of graduates to start a graduate mentor program. Uh, what our committee is is mainly looking for is the like the system, the culture, uh, the the environment that you're creating, um, and the cadence that you're creating with communication and events with graduates. Uh, so while it does look great to have you know 100, 200, 300 brothers coming back for pig dinner, um, you, you're not necessarily knocked. You know if you just chartered in the last couple of years, uh, but you still have a really strong graduate relations program, you can still place uh, in this. Uh, in this uh, award. And then make sure your graduate communication is professional and well done. A uh, quick note on the Condon Cup. Uh, this is a separate award for most improved chapter. You know, so if you're not, if you think you're not ready to, uh, if, you, if you're a little intimidated by the Cheney Cup, it's like, oh, I don't know if we'll compete for this, but we have improved a lot over the last year. The Condon Cup may be the, the one that you should consider applying for. This is it's just most improved chapter. And it's two free response questions. So your chapter's assessment of improvements so it can be done by an officer. <clears throat> and then the Purple Legionnaire's assessment improvements. So your Purple Legionnaire writes a you know page or two about all areas that the chapter's improved over the last year. Make sure you're building a strong case, you know, if it's just a paragraph or two. The committee is probably not going to think uh, too highly of it, but if you're very thorough and you've improved every aspect of operations, then uh, you'll most likely uh, place or have a strong opportunity to win the Condon Cup. So here's how the judging works. Uh, section one and two auto calculate, and that's so the like the do you host a retreat, the yes or no questions. Uh, what what uh, percentage of ritual meetings do you have throughout the year, uh, recruitment numbers, new member education, retention percentage, all of that auto calculates. And then for the rest of the awards, there is a committee that judges them. So the Baker, the Zerman, the Brightman, and the Kuhn all have three graduate brothers per award. Uh, the Jordan and the Owen are judged solely by the educational director. Uh, all of those judges submit scores for each question, which goes into a huge spreadsheet um, with a lot of like auto calculations and stuff. Uh, I can show you all some sometime later. Um, it's all color coded and everything. Um, but all those judges submit scores, those are compiled and then given to the Cheney Cup judges. Uh, the Cheney Cup judges look at the calculated scores and see you know, if, if we look at like purely the, the data um, the way the, the scoring has come in from the judges, like these would be our top three, here's our honorable mentions. And then the Cheney Cup judges will read all of the applications that are in the top 10 and then see if they agree or disagree with the judging scores. And then they're able to argue and have discourse and um, you know, champion some chapters they think should be higher um, in the order um, and then they come to a consensus on the Cheney Cup winner, the first runner up, the second runner up, and how many honorable mentions uh, should be um, awarded. So that's all the information about the Cheney Cup application process and how it's judged. And here's what you can do now if you're planning to apply March 31st, which you should definitely apply and build that into your 
um, yearly calendar that we apply for awards. Download your blank application. It's on the website. And uh, if you go to uh, phigam.org, click undergraduates and awards. Scroll down a little bit. There's a view and download um, a blank application. Actually, I might just be able to share this with y'all. Uh, so yeah, so phigam.org undergraduates awards, and then scroll down. Here's where the application is, uh, and then uh, view download a blank application. So for preparation, not submission, if you're going to submit, go through the uh, application button. Um, I'm going to get back to the presentation. All right. So once you've downloaded the blank application, uh, pick the award that you want to apply for or the awards. Uh, so if you think, all right, we well, did really good in scholarship this past year. We want to apply for the Joram Bowl. Uh, or we have a great newsletter. We want to apply for the Kim Plaque. Pick the ones you think that uh, you have a good shot at winning. Read the winning applications for those. And I can send you any and all information from the past several years um, from the, the winners. Um, look at in where those gaps are. So we see the winning application did this. We don't do that. Maybe we should work on improving that for this next year. Uh, create a shared Google Doc. Uh, so the easiest way to edit your um, awards application is through some sort of shared system so that you're not emailing a document back and forth. Um, answer all those questions on the Google Doc, and then you can just copy and paste those into the awards application. Assign an awards chair, a former chapter president, recording secretary, historian, someone that's organized, Someone that has been intimately involved with chapter operations is a really good bet for an awards chair. Delegate the appropriate questions and awards uh, throughout the application to the appropriate brothers. And I've got the next slide is going to be about who to delegate to. And then get the chapter excited uh, for uh, potentially winning an award. For documents to get your hands on now, uh, go ahead and get the grade report from the fraternity sorority life advisor. Uh, compile your organizational involvement list, ask brothers. Uh, the easiest way probably to do this is a shared uh, Excel or Google uh, sheet where brothers can just type in the organizations that they're involved with and if they hold any leadership positions. Find your scholarship program updated if necessary. Uh, compile the record of service and philanthropic donations and then locate your best chapter publication from the last year. So here's who, to whom to delegate for the different awards sections, uh, recruitment section, new member education, obviously you recruitment new, mem new member educators. The ritual section, the historian can do that. The retreats, officers can do that. Uh, for the baker, uh, community service, philanthropy, and membership development. Uh, the Zerman, yeah, several uh, chairs. It may look different on your in your chapter. You know, if you have a chaplain, you could add that in there as well. Jordan. Scholarship Chair, Brightman, Kuhn Plaque, Graduations, Publications, Corresponding Secretary, and then the Purple Legionnaire. Those key graduates should really help you with the, the Brightman. And then overseeing officers should you know, obviously help. But if you're thinking, well, we sucked in 2020, Brian, what do we do now? Uh, so like I said at the beginning, the 2021 calendar year is fresh. Uh, download the blank application, look for the winning apps, I can send you all those, uh, figure out where you want to improve over the next 12 months so that you can apply in 2022. And then set the chapter calendar in accordance with those award categories, those goals that you want to set. So if you you know, are answering no to a lot of questions or leaving some blank, or if, if you're like, oh, wow, we definitely don't do this, then make sure that you set those as goals for 2021 so that you can apply in 2022. Start compiling, documenting everything especially with like the service hours and the organizational involvement list. Uh, the more you keep up with, through, with it throughout the year, then the easier it is to apply for the awards next time. And then just a quick note, there are individual awards uh, for mostly for graduate brothers. Uh, make sure you're, uh, if you have 
outstanding graduate advisors, uh, recognize them, uh, submit a strong application for them. The Coulter Cup is a graduate brother other than the Purple Legionnaire or general officer that helps out the chapter. So this can be you know, BCA member, it can be a House Corps president, something like that, or just a brother that is very involved with the chapter and helps out that's just not a Purple Legionnaire. The Crowder Cup is the best faculty advisor. The Durants is best Purple Legionnaire. Haynes, most effective section chief. And the Wilkinson is an undergraduate award. It is your most outstanding senior that is gonna graduate this year. So make sure you're identifying individuals that deserve recognition and submitting applications uh, for them. That is also on the awards page on the FIGAM website. Uh, so make sure you're recognizing deserving brothers here. And with that, there's my contact information. I, like I said at the beginning, I oversee all the awards program. I, uh, have access to all the winning applications from the last several years. So utilize me as a resource, uh, set this as a, you know, chapter priority uh, for the next couple of months applying for these awards. Um, so you can build it into your tradition that this is just something that we do as a chapter is that we um, apply for awards. We want to stack up and see, you know, how are we doing? We want to continuously improve. We want to know where our weaknesses are so that we can shore those up. Uh, build this into your chapters program and utilize me as a resource along the way. Feel free to, that's my personal cell, feel free to text me, call me, um, email me, and I uh, hope to help you out as best as I can. I know we're running up right on time. Uh, Joe, were there any questions that that popped up that I can answer really quickly? Um, not really. Um, can chapters email you for any winning applications that they'd like to see? Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Um, one last thing just to mention, brothers, um, our closing session, the last session of the 2021 Academy will be starting shortly. So be sure to check your agenda. Uh, your attendance is expected at that last closing session. We should be wrapping up with the entire 21 Fiji Academy here in about uh, half an hour or so. So please be there for the closing session. And uh, thank you for your attention today. Yeah, thank you, brothers. Like I said, reach out and I hope to see several awards applications. Oh, in the last session, uh, somebody asked the question, you know, how many chapters apply? It's really only about 25 to 30 chapters, so about a fifth of the fraternity. So some of these awards are ripe for the taking. And we would love to see um, some new faces uh, amongst the award winners. So uh, you can do this. You all are doing great things on your campuses and in your chapters. So make sure to, uh, to apply and uh, get recognized for it. Thanks for your time, brothers.